everyone. It's Sunday again, and it's time to hear the Word of God today. And I was so excited to share with you the topic about keep your vows. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 33 till 37, it says here, You have heard that it was said to our people long ago, When you make a vow, you must not break your promise. Keep the vows that you made to the Lord. Verse 34, But I tell you, when you make a promise, don't try to make it stronger with a vow. Don't make a vow using the name of heaven, because heaven is God's throne. Verse 35, Don't make a vow using the name of the earth, because the earth is its footstool. Don't make a vow using the name of Jerusalem, because it is also belongs to him, the great king. Verse 36, And don't even say that your own head is proof that you will keep your promise. You cannot make one hair on your head white or black. Verse 7, Say only yes if you mean yes, and say only no if you may mean no, saying more than that is from the evil one. So the first thing is that commit to tell the truth. Truth is a rare commodity these days. What do you feel when someone lies to you? So the answer is that definitely hurt, especially when the lie starts to affect your own, own life. So when, they, when this lies damage people's lives, there is only one word that comes to mind, and that is betrayal. So why do people lie or swear falsely? In a worldly reasons. The first is that you know the truth, but you have flavored the truth in such a way that it will profit you. Like, the second thing is that you lie to preserve yourself, knowing if you told the truth, you may be able or you may be scolded. And most of that is the children. They don't want to tell the truth because they're afraid to be scolded. So regardless of the reasons, most people who have the habit of lying are convinced that they can get away with it. In Acts chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira, who sold the property and gave only a portion of the proceeds to the church. So where is the problem? It is not that they gave only a portion, but that they told Peter for some self-centered reasons that they gave all the proceeds. So they lied thinking that they got away with it. Peter prompted by the Holy Spirit and confronted them with two basic truths. Number one is that Peter asked, Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? So in this statement, Peter reminds us that the source of lies is Satan. The second basic truth is that he convicted them that they had lied not to men, but to God. In Acts chapter 5 verse 4, that it says there that they lied not, all, not to men, but to God. So what were the consequences of these lies? They both just dropped dead. So why must we commit ourselves to tell the truth? Number one is that the truth is necessary for our own survival. Falsehood has damaging after effects in every aspect of our lives. The second thing is that the Bible says that God hates seven things. And the, the second thing is a lying tongue. Jesus said that the truth shall set you free. So the second thing to keep our vows is that commit to fulfill our vows to the Lord. Many Christians today have one bad habit and they take the making of vows lightly. So how do we take it lightly? 
by breaking it as fast and as easily as making it. Why? Because of our lack of understanding of the seriousness that it entails and the binding obligation to God. Number two is that if you are to make a vow, understand that it is a vow to God and He expects us to honor our part. Do not delay in fulfilling your part. Be clear and careful on the conditions of the vow you make. Like for example, in the life of Jephthah, there is a tragic result of his vows in Judges chapter 11. So the exchange for victory over his enemies, he, quash, he casually vowed to offer as a burnt offering whatever comes out first to the door of his house. So thinking only be his favorite slave, but instead what comes out was this one, his one and only daughter. So, my dear friends, be careful about making vows. So the third thing on how to keep our vows is that commit to fulfill our promises to others. So as easily as we break solemn vows to the Lord, we are even more guilty of breaking promises to others. Most of the time, whatever the promise is, it is broken. So what happens when Christians develop a habit of breaking promises, not just to other believers, but to the non-believers? Number one is that their witness and testimony are spoiled or tainted or stained. And the second thing is that we will eventually cause them to blaspheme the Lord. So what are we going to do? Jesus tells us to be truthful. Let your yes be yes, and let your no be no. So in our conclusion, what should be our motive? So God kept his vows to us, and though we were undeserving, he keeps blessing us because of his love for us. We who were redeemed by the blood of Jesus can return the blessing back to God by our obedience to be truthful vow keepers. Thank you so much for listening and I hope that it gives you understanding and enlightenment in making your vows not only to the people but to the Lord. And have a great day, everyone. May the Lord bless you. And may His presence be with you. Be with you all. Thank you.